is the kamal. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preordained means merely in common language, in the layman's language, in simple terms. That Allah ta'ala because of his vast knowledge, because he is alim, Allah ta'ala knows everything. Allah ta'ala knows fully well what this person will do in his future life. Now Allah Ta'ala gave every person hidayat when the souls were created every soul was given hidayat Alastu bi rabbikum so every soul was given hidayat they all said qalu bala they all said bala so you can see that the hidayat was there for everyone Allah Ta'ala did not deprive any soul of hidayat if Allah Ta'ala at that stage when the souls were created some were given hidayat and some were not given hidayat then we will say again it's injustice so every soul was given hidayat at that stage. But when the person comes into this world, now in the world of the souls, there were no buildings and there were no businesses and there were no cinemas and theatres and discos, nothing in the world of souls. So they all the souls said, indeed we believe in Allah. Ta'ala. But now that they come into this world, as they grow up, then around them is a different environment. Around them is a different environment altogether. Now sometimes a temptation towards sins and sometimes an encouragement to do good deeds. So Allah Ta'ala therefore gave every person a willpower. He has given every person a willpower. And it is with that willpower that he operates every other activity of his life. Because if we say that Allah Ta'ala has decided to fill up Jahannam, so why should I do any good deeds? As the student says that it caused me depression when I read that in Bukhari Sharif. And I was trying to make some progress, I was making some kind of ibadat and things, but it caused me depression. That if I am going to go to Jahannam, why must I do it? So Allah Ta'ala has given this willpower. Now if Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, if we have to say that He is the one who has preordained everything, so everything will happen as he has preordained. So then why must the person even go to business? Why must he go to the college and university? Why must the student bother so much to study his books? He must say that if Allah Ta'ala has will that I will become a doctor, then I will become a doctor. Why must I research so much of books? And why must I go far away from my home and stay in a university and then go through all the other difficulties and hardships that go together in a student's life? if he is really a committed student. There is no need for all that. He must close all those books, put it away, and when the examination time comes, they say, but uh, you were not even in classes. They say, yeah, but if Allah Ta'ala had ordained that I must become a doctor, I will become a doctor, so I want to write the examination. So will he become a doctor like that? So he believes that everything is happening with the will of Allah Ta'ala, but he is still making that effort to become a doctor. Otherwise there was no need for any kind of effort. The same with the businessman, that if it was Allah Ta'ala's will that he will earn 100,000 for the month in his big business, so then Allah Ta'ala will send it. He must keep the shop closed, he must stay at home and he must wait. He must just wait and then go and check, keep checking his bank balance if it came way in there. Keep going to the bank and ask the bank manager, did any amount come into my account? Then we ask from where, say from the heavens. <laughs> Did any angel come and make a deposit here in my name? Whatever was in my taqdeer. So he still makes an effort. He goes there, he makes an effort. But after that, whatever happens, then he accepts that that is now from Allah. As Ali radiallahu ta'ala explained it very well. He said, pick up one of your legs. So the person picked up one leg. He said, now pick up the other leg. He said, no, I can't do that. You can only stand and if you try to pick up both legs, you'll fall. Which means that there is some tadbir and some taqdeer. That you have to make the effort how much you can make. And then if something is beyond that, then we will say that is taqdeer. That, you, that it was not your, within your means or your capacity. So just as the person makes an effort in everything else, the same goes with his amal, with his actions and with his deeds. That he can't just say that taqdeer, if Allah Ta'ala wills, I'll make namaz, if Allah Ta'ala wills, I'll read Qur'an Sharif, if Allah Ta'ala wills, I'll do this and do that. And if I'm not doing it, then because Allah Ta'ala does not will, that is why I'm not doing it. So the preordaining means that Allah Ta'ala has recorded that knowledge of His. It is pre-recorded. 
because of his knowledge that what this person will do with his willpower, whether he will pick up that knife and stab somebody or whether he will pick up that knife and cut onions and potatoes, that Allah wa ta'ala has recorded it. Whether that person will use the gun for his self-defense or whether the person will use the gun to shoot somebody down for stealing and for robbery purposes. Now Allah Ta'ala has recorded that. Whether this person will sleep and make and miss his namazes or he will get up and make his namaz. Now all that has been recorded. So that does not mean that because Allah Ta'ala has written it, so it is happening without this person's willpower. This person is going to be questioned because of his willpower. A simple example, a person is traveling. He te- telephones us and he says that he is leaving from Johannesburg. I give this example many times. The person is leaving from Johannesburg. He is taking a certain train. And that train will be stopping on the way at Harris Smith, at Lady Smith, at Peter Maritzburg, and then it will arrive at Durban. So now there is a timetable that this train stops at Harris Smith at a certain time. It stops at Lady Smith at a certain time. It stops at Peter Maritzburg at a certain time. And it arrives at Durban at a certain time. So knowing that, having that knowledge, which is in the timetable of the trains, now when that person departed from there, at 10 o'clock, so we said that at 12 o'clock he is going to be in Harris Smith. It's a very fast train, you stop at Harris Smith 12 o'clock. So we made a note of it, 12 o'clock Harris Smith. Now we looked at our watch, he said, well, I've had a record made here, 12 o'clock he'll be in Harris Smith. So he has arrived at Harris Smith. Then afterwards, after we look at our watch again, we say, well, another two hours time, it's in Peter Maris Smith. So we made a note of it. Now we looked at it, we said, well, the time is 3 o'clock or 2 o'clock, so now he's in Peter Maris Smith. And then he will be in Durban certain time. Now our writing it on the book, in the book we wrote it because of our knowledge that this train stops here a certain time, there a certain time, there a certain time. So we wrote it in our book and we were watching our clock and we were saying the train is here, the train is there, the train is there and the train is here. So was the train moving because of our knowledge? Was the train moving because we had recorded it in our diary or our book that the train will be here certain time, certain time, certain time? Was it moving because of our knowledge? Or did we force the driver of the train that because I've got it written here in this book now, so you have to have the train there a certain time. The engine driver, he is the one that's operating and there is a system, there's a whole network. Now they're using their willpower their, and the, all the other things that are required for the train to move, the train is moving and it can still go off. Our recording does not necessarily mean that it will be on time there. We made a note according to the time knowledge that we had. But because our knowledge is weak, deficient, therefore it's not necessary that the train will be there on the time that we have recorded. We could have recorded 2 o'clock it will be there, but instead there was a delay, there was some accident and the train only came 3 hours later or 4 hours later. So Allah wa ta'ala, because his knowledge is perfect, so he has recorded it, meaning that is what we talk about preordained, that this person at such a time, such a place, he is going to do a certain thing, whether good or bad, but he is going to do that using the willpower that I have given to him, then I will create that action. Allah Ta'ala is the creator of that action. That is taqdi. That the person, like now I want to pick up this kitab. So my action that I am going to do is with my willpower. I want to pick up this kitab. So I am going to extend my hand and pick up this kitab. Now Allah Ta'ala didn't force me that I must pick up this kitab. The thought came into my mind, I am using the willpower and I am extending my hand to pick up the kitab. But who gave me the strength now to pick up that kitab? I could have had a lot of desire to pick it up. But if Allah Ta'ala does not put the strength into my hand to extend it and pick up the kitab, then I cannot pick it up. So the creator of that action, the man decided himself, he used his willpower and now he decided to pick up that kitab. So Allah Ta'ala gave him the strength to pick it up. Allah Ta'ala does not make his hand become paralyzed if he is picking up a filthy novel. 
Allah doesn't make his hand become paralyzed if he is picking up a filthy magazine. Allah doesn't make him blind straight away the moment he is watching something filthy. Allah Ta'ala creates that action so that he may now be punished because of his action or he may be rewarded because of that action. That is what simply taqdeer means. Details and all the technicalities and all that we are not obliged to go into it. It will create a kind of misunderstanding. So this whole issue of being preordained, preordained, this is what it means that Allah wa ta'ala has given man willpower. Now that willpower he is exercising, he is using. If he is using it for some good action, then Allah Ta'ala creates that action. And Allah Ta'ala attributes it to him that this person did that good action, so he will go into Jannah. The person who is disbelieving and is doing all haram, so it is that willpower that he used to do that haram. Nobody forced us now and pulled us and dragged us from our homes and brought us to the masjid. Each and every person he made use of his own intellect, his understanding, his willpower. He looked at the watch, he heard the azan, then he realized that it is time for namaz, so he made and made, made wazu, and then he came to the masjid, and now after the namaz also, many people went away, Some pe- many people sat. Now, it is all the willpower that the person used. Nobody dragged the others out, and nobody forced you to sit here. So just as we do all these actions using our willpower, our businesses, our education and everything else. So in the same way this is also taqdeer that the person makes an effort when it comes to deen. That his righteous actions and deeds he will get the rewards. Now,